Welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be doing my March faves and fails. A lot of you know I have been going through a lot of makeup lately between my BoxyCharm, Ipsy, Shop My Stash, and a few new pieces that I have purchased that I am excited about. So I have a lot of makeup to go through to tell you what I really, really have loved in the month of March. And I have a few fails, a few things I'm working through. So let's jump in. As you guys can tell, I'm clearly doing my faves and fails before I do my Shop My Stash update for the month. Mostly because I wanted to give myself that little extra time to delve a little bit further into the makeup that I had. I'd uploaded that a little bit later in the month in March. So I'm just giving myself a second to really dig into some things. But... I have really been a consistent creature of habit with a few things because I've noticed how good my makeup has looked, so I've been like committing myself to only those things. Some of these things you will definitely have heard me speak about very recently, and it's because they are awesome, at least for my skin. I know not everybody has the same skin type, so I'm just telling you as an oily skin girl with large pores, sensitive skin, this is what I am loving right now and reach for like on the weekends, on the evenings, all kinds of times. When Wild Photo Focus Stick Foundation in the shade Soft Beige has become my staple, my go-to. I really like this. Now, I am a die-hard lover of liquid foundations, so this totally surprised me, and I'm still, like, waiting for the moment that I decide I don't like this. Now, granted, I've only had it in my collection for, what, like, two and a half weeks or something, but this is what I reach for on the weekends. This is what I reach for when I know I'm going to go see people and I want to make a good impression, even. So that tells you this is where I'm going right now. I'm going on on the weekends. I like the no makeup makeup look where I just look a little glowy, look a little dewy, and I just look like I have good skin. And this is really helping me. I've noticed also I can use this with either a dry beauty sponge or a wet one. A wet one will definitely sheer it out more. And because I feel like I need at least two applications of this product to kind of give me the amount of coverage that I like, I usually like either like a somewhat damp, sponge or I've used it dry and it's worked really really well. This has been something that I'm like where have you been all my life? It's a new product so I'm really excited about it. Something I really liked using with this though is something that was really really hyped up like a month ago on YouTube and I try not to follow the hype like to the letter but when it's inexpensive and I'm hearing from like the people I trust on YouTube that's amazing I, I gotta try it. And I told you guys I also knuckled under and bought the e.l.f concealers. It's the 16 hour camo concealers. I'm using two right now. Medium sand and medium beige. For some reason, I truly feel like I generally gravitate to a lighter cover concealer for the brightening aspects of it. I feel like I learned that early on when I was using Tarte Shape Tape and specifically ColourPop's No Filter Concealer, which is still something I love for six bucks. But because I wasn't sure how this was going to apply, I bought both of these and I'm in the middle of experimenting with my day-to-day -day makeup routine and I'm actually finding that the medium beige shade, which is a little warmer, is actually going better with this foundation and some of the powders that I've been using. So I know I just talked about these and the things I bought while on my limited no buy, but I, I'm starting to put this more with my foundations, this and other liquid ones, because I tried with my Ipsy bag this Yensa Color and Face BC Foundation, which is like a BB cream and a CC cream all in one, but it was way too pasty light for me. So I added in the darker shade of the e.l.f. concealer and my makeup looked so good in person. And when I filmed with these on, so many of you in my comments were like, what did you do different about your makeup today? You look great. It was the combination of these two. So I'm definitely going to start playing more with my colors and maybe kind of seek out a little bit more about maybe my undertones have been wrong. Maybe I've been wrong all along. It's totally possible. But I'm also, again, living in a totally different climate than I have my entire life. So stay tuned. But so far, these are, um, long story long, these are my favorites this month. And I've only had them, what, two weeks? Love them. I feel like I'm a broken record right now. The NYX Stay Matte is not flat makeup foundation. It's a powder foundation with a brush. I did try using it with the little guy here and I didn't like it as much. I mean, it is good coverage, but I feel like it still turns a little too orangey on me at this time of year. But if I go in with a like more like powdery, fluffier brush and kind of like put it all over my face, it sets 
these pieces like a dream and it does give coverage so i feel like i'm really getting the full coverage that i want with what feels like really light makeup for me and i'm not seeing those lines on my face those wrinkles from you know wear time and also sunglasses i'm not seeing that nearly as much with these pieces so it's like right now I'm discovering what's gonna be really helpful for me in the summer, which summer comes quick here. So loving these drugstore finds that I just found, not sorry that I purchased them. To lighten up my under eyes though, because I have been experimenting with the darker concealers, I still love an old trusty powder. This is my Essence Brighten Up Banana Powder. I love taking this right under the eyes just to kind of lighten up the areas that I want highlighted, but also protected. Still love this, thought I'd give that a little honorable mention because I've been delving into it a lot more lately. And this is a bronzer that I thought was gonna be a fail after I first tried it and I was like, oh, I like this. And then I've been playing with my base makeup, my foundations, concealers, powders, whatnot. And I was like, mm, do I still like this? And I have already hit like a good size divot into this brand new bronzer that I know some of you said you tried it and it didn't work for you. And I think this one is like, you got to have the right skin tone for it. This is the Wet n Wild Color Icon Bronzer in the shade Sunset Strip Tease. This is one of their newer ones. I went through a little phase with it that I'm still trying to decide, like, if I build it up, I really like it. It does help me with my natural glow days. I can't do this for, like, a full, full beat. I will have to rely on another contour piece and whatnot. But because this time of year, I'm really kind of doing lighter makeup on the weekends. I'm not wanting a contour. This is great for just lightly warming up my face and kind of moving on with my day. I know some of you said this didn't work for you, but this one's working for me at the moment. I do worry that it's not going to work for me in the summer, though. So stay tuned for this. But right now, I have made such a divot on it. Oh, and a brush that I really love for that. I don't really mention my brushes too much on here. And I feel like a dedicated brush video is kind of boring. Not everybody wants to see that. So I do want to mention them when I can. One that I love to use that with is the Moda Pro RL. This is a BMX 130 pointed blush brush. But I like it for bronzer because I'm weird like that. It has a perfect perfect little like end point for it that I can just really build up the color that I want. I know this is a blush brush, but I like it for bronzer and this is one I've been reaching for. And again, I just became a Moda Maven. So feel free to look in the links below to save some money on your brushes. I got this from BoxyCharm a while ago though. Love it. I received a beautiful, beautiful gift from one of you guys. You guys saw, you guys have been, that have been watching me forever. You know that I have always loved trying new makeup from BoxyCharm and the Becca highlighter that we all got. Some of us got liquid, some of us got powder. I got stuck with the liquid and oily skin. It's like, Ugh, what do I do with this? I ended up decluttering it and giving it to a friend who was really excited about it. Um, but one of you amazing people were doing your own personal declutter and sweet Sweet, sweet Sarah, you reached out to me to say, hey girl, I am decluttering and I got the Persecco Becca highlighter in the powder form. Do you want it? I don't need it. I don't like it. It doesn't work with my skin tone. And I was like, you are the sweetest. Thank you so much. And she also was like, hey, I'm going through my rest of my makeup and realized I also have champagne pop. Do you want that too? And I was like, you are the gift that keeps on giving. Are you sure? And she so lovingly gifted me two Becca highlighters. I mean... I love you, Sarah. Thank you so much. Not only because we always talk about makeup on Instagram and chat away, but I really appreciate this so much so I can review it for you guys. The champagne pop color is what I have been wearing a ton. On the weekends, even when I have a light makeup going, I love this. I'm wearing it today on my cheek. I've also really liked the Persecco Pop, which has more of a yellow tone to it on the inner parts of my eyes and on my shoulders and stuff like that. These are so stunning. And girl, you are my first shout out of the month. If you guys don't know, if you're new here, I love to shout out my frequent commenters. And Sarah, girl, I see you all the time on Instagram and in my comments. So thank you so much. I'm genuinely I genuinely appreciate this so much. Ooh, another fave for me has been my Luxie 243 Precision Blending Brush. I mentioned that I don't always talk about the brushes I use, and I'm trying to be a little bit more mindful about that. I got this in a boxy charm, and this has actually replaced the brush I used for forever and a day to contour my nose. I try not to be too much with my nose contour, but you know, you kind of need something more tapered, and this has been beautiful for it. It doesn't apply too much product, and it's easy to blend if you do actually 
accidentally just be like, oh, too much right there. I have loved this brush, and again, thanks BoxyCharm. I've been talking about a lot of things that I really love, and I love doing that, and I've got a couple of fails this month. Not a lot, but something that I've told you I love, I adore, but the packaging sucks on it is a ColourPop item. And somebody else just reached out to me on Instagram about this too because you guys had a solution for it as well. It is the ColourPop Brow Boss. I have said before, I love this, but the spoolie will just get jammed into the lid and die. So just immediately when you get it, throw the cap away and then just keep this out. But I still had product in here and I was using it earlier this week and somehow it broke off from the pen and is stuck up in the cap. I was so disappointed. I've been trying to get it out, there it goes, to like fix it and everything because there's still product there, but it's not working the same. I have to keep fixing it. So uh, ColourPop, I love this so much and I love how fine it is and it's really inexpensive but quality product. Fix the packaging between this and now it keeps breaking off. Like mm, help a sister out here. That was totally a fail for me even though I love the product and the brand. Now I have liner all over my white tabletop. Ugh. And another fail for me this month is actually a hair care item that I don't know if I've ever talked about here on my channel. This was gifted to me about a year ago, and even after owning it for about a year, I still can't make it work properly, even though I've watched some videos and I've really tried to make it work. This is probably on every social media ad you've ever seen if you like any beauty things. It is the Time like hair straightener and curler. Oh, it just pinched me. It has these like slats on it and it's got a little curvature to it and you're supposed to be able to just like curl your hair seamlessly and it comes with like a video tutorial that you can call in to their customer service and they'll teach you and all these things. I, I've had this for over a year. I've tried to use this so many times. I had a really good time straightening my hair with it, uh, especially since I have frizzy curly hair and there's humidity here in Florida. But having it actually curl the way it shows, I'll get like a few pieces good and then I still can't get the rest of my head and it's a whole arm workout the whole time. I really, really struggle with this baby. So if you have a tip or a YouTube video that you think is just like breaks it down stupid simple for me, let me know in the comments below because I want this to work and I have seen it work on other people. I'm just, I can't make it work. And it, it's such a fail for me every time I try. There's also a couple of lifestyle things I wanted to tell you guys about. I love scary movies. If you don't love scary movies, I'm so sorry. But I have to tell you, whenever there's a new scary movie out, I'm so excited. And the movie Us is a really good movie. It's not as good as Get Out, because this is kind of like in the same franchise, but it is still so good. We just saw that this past weekend, and if you're a moviegoer and you like some scary, like, thriller like suspense movies, you will really like that. Um, and some clothing pieces. Just a couple of fashion pieces that I got really inexpensive on Amazon. There are some jean shorts that I got and there is a nice little blousey top that I'm wearing today. Um, and I'm gonna have these linked below. As a woman that has a larger bust, smaller waist, and bigger hips and booty, we're called an hourglass figure, I struggle a lot with shorts and getting things that make me feel comfortable and not showing too much. And there are these jeans that I can now not pronounce the name, but they are mid-rise shorts, frayed hem. They're just like a cute little style that you would want to wear maybe with a flowy top like I have on right now that I'm going to talk about. I struggle to get jean shorts because usually they go by the size of like the waist, but my hips and my booty are a little bit bigger. Thanks, universe. The waist and the booty aren't really proportionate as far as, I guess, uh, clothing styles in the stores think they should be. So I ordered these online with some like caution, but I looked through the reviews like crazy and that's how I was able to figure out a size. I did have to go up a size than I normally would, just food for thought about your own body type. Like, look at the reviews before you really look at like the, I mean, yeah, there's always have the sizings on the websites and stuff, but I really suggest looking at what people say that are similar to body types of yours. I always appreciate that about Amazon and the pictures that they put in. I really like these shorts. They can get a little short, that's kind of like pull them down a little bit, but I think they're really comfortable. They're a little stretchy, which is great for hips and booty. They are really nice. If you're looking for some jean shorts that aren't, you know, 
teeny tiny junior sizes. I really like these. And this top I have on right now, it's very flowy. It goes really well with these shorts. I got those on Amazon as well. It's very light and flowy, but still looks dressy enough. Please ignore the white bra under it. It's laundry day. It goes with the shorts and it's just nice for these hot days we're already having here in Florida. So you could just throw on some shorts, a little tank top and go to lunch. I really have been liking these. I've been wearing them a lot. So just food for thought, if anybody has a similar body type to me where it's larger bust, smaller waist, bigger hips and booty, I've really enjoyed these and they look good together. You don't look like you're showing off too much and you feel comfortable and that's so important. So now I'm gonna be shouting out my other frequent commenter. I see you guys all month long in my comments and you guys are the favorite part of my month every month so I love shouting you out. Sarah, I already mentioned you and I'm so grateful for you. Thank you so much. Carol Garcia, I see you giving in depth paragraph style comments and I love it. You have been on my channel with me on this journey for so long. So hi Carol, thank you so much. I love seeing you. I love seeing all of you and you never know, you could be shouted out in my next Faves and Fails video. Thank you guys so much for watching and if you happen to be new to my crazy little channel, hi new friend, I hope you take a quick moment to hit that subscribe button down below to see all the fun, loud, weird, unique videos I put out every single week. Bye friends.